In today's video, I'm about to show you something really interesting. I'm going to show you how an agent that's powered by an LLM like OpenAI can use custom tools that are actually powered by other LLMs. This is a really killer approach if you want to build extremely powerful agents that can perform multiple types of tasks. Let's say you found a killer LLM like Code Llama or Star Coder, and you noticed that it beats OpenAI every single time when it comes to code generation, and you want to somehow get this into your AI product. But you obviously don't want to remove OpenAI from your architecture because it's the best at text generation. And similarly, you found a model that was way better than OpenAI at image generation, and you wanted to get that also into your AI product. So that depending on the query, the query would be taken up by the model that specialized in that particular task. So how would you do it? Now, the old approach would have been to build a router that took in the prompt and the router would itself be powered by an LLM and it would then decide which model to send the query to. But there are multiple challenges with this approach. It's not very scalable because if you add a few more models, there's a lot of load on the router to assess which prompt goes to which model. And the router's LLM might take a while to process all the information. And most importantly, it might end up sending the wrong prompt to the wrong model. And the thing is, even after all that, it's not an agentic model, meaning our system can just reply, not do any tasks for us. So the new approach takes agents into account. Now in the diagram, I show you just one agent, but you can imagine many more here. So we have a LangChain agent originally powered by OpenAI, which is going to do all the heavy lifting for us. And the OpenAI will decide what to do with the prompt. And then we have the concept of a tool, which is simply an extension that an agent can use to help it with a particular task. So the main idea here is that you can instead power your tools with different LLMs. And since OpenAI and LangChain work really well together in already deciding when to use tools, this approach is highly effective and the chances of things going wrong reduce significantly. So you'll have a custom tool powered by an LLM like Code Llama that's really good with coding. And you'll have another custom power tool by an LLM that's good with image generation. And you can have many of such tools that can be simply used by the agent. And of course, the best part here is that this is an agentic system, meaning we can leverage all of these models and maybe some other tools to actually perform tasks on the internet on the behalf of the user. So in today's project, I'll show you an example with this new approach where we will build custom tools powered by another LLM in an agent system that's already using OpenAI as the primary model. So we'll go through the code which is present in a Colab file and you can simply run it without worrying about setting up an environment. And the link of this file is in the description of this video. Make sure to make a copy of this so that you can refer to it later on. Now a quick reminder that today's video is part of the Gen AI and LLM playlist on this channel and you'll find plenty of awesome small projects that use LLMs on this playlist. I highly recommend watching them. Now let's look at our code. Whenever you see me build agents with custom tools, you'll usually see me perform five steps. The first step will be to define and initialize our tool. Second step will be initializing our LLM. Third will be initializing our memory. The fourth step is about initializing our agent. And the final step is running the agent. Now you can play around with the order of the first three steps, but the fourth and the fifth will always be the last two steps because to run the agent, it needs to be initialized. And to initialize the agent, you need memory and LLM fields. Now, before we go to our main example, we want to start with a simpler tool just so that we are extremely clear with all these five steps required to build our tools. I just want to show you how you can make a simple calculator in LangChain. So why a calculator? It's because in our previous video on LangChain tools, we noticed how our agent had access to a calculator and our agent used it to perform a calculation. And I just wanted to show you how it works internally. So in the first line, I import LangChain, OpenAI and Transformers. Now LangChain is because you want to build our agent and OpenAI is what's going to power our agent and Transformers is going to let me work with the other LLM you will use via a custom LangChain tool. We just want our calculator to calculate the circumference. So we first import the base tool, which is the base class from which our tool class will inherit. And we import pi from math because for our circumference calculation, we need it. And we get union from typing module to specify that the radius argument can either be an integer or a float. So we create our class circumference tool as a subclass of the base tool. We give it a name circumference calculator and a description and define our run function to accept the radius, which could be float or integer. And the function returns float with radius multiplied by two and pi because the formula for circumference is two pi r. We don't want the function to be called asynchronously, so we raise a not implemented error there. So our first step was defining the tool and that's now complete. Now let's do the second and third steps. Initializing the LLM and the memory. So we import OS because we want to be able to set our API key. Then we import OpenAI since we need to initialize our LLM and the conversation buffer memory, which you might remember from our LangChain memory video. This is going to store our conversation with the LLM. 
So we set our OpenAI API key using the OS module. Then we initialize our LLM as chat OpenAI. We pass in the key, the temperature as zero, and the model name we need. Then we initialize our memory as conversation buffer window memory, which is an efficient memory where you store only the past few interactions. And in the next cell, we initialize our agent by first including our circumference tool in the tools list, and then passing our tools, LLM, and our memory to the agent. So all our four steps are complete, and now it's just the fifth step, which is running the agent. So we pass it the question, can you calculate the circumference of a circle that has a radius of 7.81 mm? And in the output, we notice that it did not use our tool, and the answer it gave is pretty close, but not quite right. So if you remember from our previous video, I showed you a little technique to get the agent to use our tool. And the first thing we do is print out the original prompt template that the agent is operating with. And now we will modify it with another prompt and mention at the end that the assistant is terrible at maths and should always use tools no matter how basic the questions being asked are. And then we update the agent's prompt to now reflect this new prompt that we just created. And we try again with the same question. And here in the output, you can see it chose the circumference calculator tool. And then it's able to get the right answer for our question. Cool. So with this example, we have seen our five steps to create custom tools for agents and also our workaround to get the agent to use our tool. And this means we have recapped some extremely important concepts from some of our previous videos. Now I want to step up the heat a little bit and want to show you a tool that can accept multiple parameters. This is going to be important because ideally you want to build complex tools and they will need more parameters. So here we will be building a tool that helps us calculate the hypotenuse of a triangle. I'll start off by importing optional so that I can pass values of any of the data types that I mentioned, or I can even pass none. Then I import some function that will help us with hypotenuse calculation, like square root, cosine, and sine. We then provide a description of how the tool is supposed to be used. This description is meant for chat GPT, and I want to tell you a pro tip that you might not have come across. The higher the quality of the description that you write, the easier it becomes for chat GPT to know when to use your tool. Next, we create our class Pythagoras tool as a subclass of base tool and we set our name and description. And we define our run function, which takes in multiple parameters like adjacent side, opposite side, and angle. Up until this point, we have seen extremely simple tools that accepted only one parameter. Next, we write some if and else if conditions to calculate the hypotenuse along with our catch condition, where it's not possible to calculate the hypotenuse. We also set a not implemented error if this function is called asynchronously. And in our tools list, we include the Pythagoras tool, and in the next cell, we set up our new prompt with the prompt we recently created, where we tell the agent that's bad at maths and to remember to use tools. And we set this new prompt as our agent's prompt and also pass the tools to our agent and then run it with a question, if I have a triangle with two sides of length 51 centimeter and 34 centimeter, what is the length of the hypotenuse? We can see it immediately started using our hypotenuse calculator and we get the right answer. Awesome. Now that I've shown you all these examples, I feel that we are now ready for our main core example for today's video. This is where we'll be building an image caption tool that can look at an image and tell us what's there in the image. And this tool is going to be powered by another LLM and we will get our existing LangChain agent that's powered by OpenAI to use it. We start off by importing Torch, which helps us with tensor computations and then some classes from the Transformers library by Hugging Face which will help us in processing images and generating conditional text, which are image captions in this case. Then we specify the model we want to use. It's the blip image captioning large model by Salesforce. And I will have access to it via the hugging face model variable. In the next line, I set my device as CUDA or GPU if it's available via Torch, else stay with CPU. Then we load the pre-trained model. And if you notice, we are passing our HF model and also moving it to our device that we had set earlier. Next, we import requests because we want to be able to download an image from the internet and then get our model to see what's there in it and then generate captions. So then we import PIL, a very common Python imaging library for handling images. Then we set the URL for the image to be captioned and we have used unsplash links here which have very high quality images. And then we download the image using requests by calling the image URL with the get method and converting it into RGB format to make it easier to process. Then we process the image and convert it to a PyTorch tensor suitable for the model by running our processor on the specified device. And this is available to us in the inputs variable that we will now use in the next cell. So in the next cell, we call our generate method on our model and pass in the inputs with the max number of tokens as 20, which is perfect for an image caption. Any more than that, and it'll be an image description and not a caption. And it'll also take longer to generate. In the next line, we simply decode the output, which is the caption, 
and print the generated caption. Next, we want to initialize our tool and we first start by giving the tool a description. And we're telling our agent to use this tool when it's given the URL of an image. Then we create our class for the image caption tool, which is a subclass of paste tool and give it the name image captioner and set the description that we just created. In the run function, we accept a URL in string format. We open the image, process it, generate the caption, decode it and return the caption. And from the async run function, we just return a not implemented error. And we also include our image caption tool that we just created in the list of tools that we will soon pass to our agent. Now you remember from earlier, our workaround to ensure that the agent always uses our tool is to change the original prompt template of the agent. So here we set a system message and set it up as a new prompt using the agent create prompt function and setting that as the agent's prompt. And we also pass our tools list, which contains our image caption tool. Now it's time to run our agent and we ask it, what does this image show and pass in the URL. And in the output, you can see it use the image captioner tool in the action. And the final answer is there's a monkey that is sitting in the tree and that's perfect. That's exactly what's there in the image. Now, just to be sure this tool is accurate and this model is accurate and does not hallucinate, let's try a couple more examples. So we pass in the image of a surfer and again convert it to RGB and ask the agent what's there in the image. And in the output, we can see that it again uses the image captioner tool and we get the final answer. The image has a surfer riding a wave in the ocean on a clear day and that's perfect. Now I'm going to give it a more complex image and that'll be the final test of the accuracy of this model. I pass in this image where there's a baby alligator sitting on a branch, but it's camouflaged really well and you almost can't tell it's there. And these kind of images really confuse AI models very easily. So we ask the agent what's there in this image and the final answer we get, there's a lizard sitting on a tree branch in the water. Well, that's simply brilliant. And I know it should have said alligator, but they're from the same family and at least it's able to detect there is something there. So I'm satisfied. So just a quick recap, we built an awesome little project today where we have an LLM agent using Langchain that is powered by OpenAI. And we use another LLM for a specialized task via a custom tool that we built. Now using this new scale, you can build some really awesome stuff. Do let me know in the comments what you decide to build. Now these videos take a lot of research and quite a lot of time to make. And this channel is really small and the content I make is for a super niche audience and it doesn't get picked up by the algorithm since I don't use any clickbaits. So I quickly want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video and this channel is completely dependent on you sharing these videos and liking and commenting on these videos. And most importantly, subscribing to this channel because I don't have any partnerships or sponsorships and this is a really small channel with extremely technical and niche content, which doesn't get really served by YouTube. So make sure you share this with your friends and you like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and all that you've done for this channel and I'll see you in the next video.